stages of change is a really helpful model to understand, especially when you're trying to develop healthy behaviours and set goals. Hey, welcome back. Really glad you're able to join me here. Today, I thought I would start a new series all about goal setting. To be able to set goals that are strong and productive, we wanna make sure that we understand a few things about human behavior. So today I'm gonna to cover the stages of change. This is also known as trans theoretical model of change and it came around in the 70s when people were trying to understand how to quit smoking and then kind of developed into the drug and alcohol sector and helping people with addictions. It's also used for recovery and mental health. In this video, I'm gonna cover the stages of change in a way of understanding how we can use it to develop healthy behaviors and set goals that are going to stick and last. So in this model, there are five different stages. They are pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, activation, and maintenance. When we're sitting in the pre-contemplation stage, it's almost like we're in a bit of denial about the behavior. If it's a negative behavior, we kind of don't really recognize it as something that is even a problem in our lives or is causing any disturbance in our flow in life. We may become quite defensive in talking about this behavior and the benefits, even if they are unhealthy benefits, end up outweighing the benefits that will come if we stop doing this behavior. So it's, it's in a, we're in a stage where we're not really seeing any need to change that behavior. This may be a place where other people are pointing out this behavior and we, again, like I said, we're getting a bit defensive about it. It may be helpful to start reframing where we look at the behavior and we kind of go, is, is this actually what I want? Is the unhealthy consequences of this action really benefiting me in any way? What are the places in my life that this is starting to damage my relationships, my finances, my self-esteem, all of those different things that can start being affected by our behaviors? Is that, is that actually really what I want? Is that actually something that I see as a benefit or am I just kind of telling myself that because I'm enjoying the consequences? <laughs> And even if we're not getting to a point where we're going, yeah, actually, I really need to change it. At least we're recognizing that it's an unhealthy behavior and at least we're owning it. And we're just going, yeah, it's something that I do right now in the space that I'm in. I'm not, re I'm not ready to change. When we move from pre-contemplation to contemplation, there still is a bit of ambivalence around our beliefs of this behavior, but we're starting to recognize it a bit more, especially from the work that we've done at the end of the pre-contemplation around the reframing and the recognizing, that's starting to take effect into how we're seeing the behavior and we're starting to open up a bit more about how we view that behavior and if it is actually something that we want in our lives. Still not quite at the stage of, yeah, I need to change it, but we're starting to actually think about it. We're contemplating the, the movement in that behavior. In a way, we're aware of it, but we're not in the stage of committing to anything yet. This is a really good place to write a pros and cons list about this behavior. Now that we're moving out of the pre-contemplation and going, yeah, I'm loving all these unhealthy, <laughs> all these unhealthy, unhealthy consequences, we're starting to go, okay, let's actually, let's actually you know, break it down. Let's let, you don't actually have to write this down. It might just be you collecting the evidence for yourself in your mind and, re, you know, really kind of reflecting on the, on the behavior. And so this is the stage where we start to actually go, is this what I want in my life? And is this something that I actually need to change? At this point, theoretically, we're starting to move into the third stage, which is preparation. This is where we start to build a bit more determination around actually wanting to change the behavior. And we um, have collected the evidence, we've moved out of the contemplation and just thinking about it. And now we're actually starting to plan. This is our information gathering and planning stage. This is a great space to be in because this is where we start to develop our why, our purpose, and our motivation behind wanting to change this behavior. We want to solidify our why in this moment because when it comes to the action, when it comes to the actual changing of the behavior, we want to have something strong to fall back on. We want to have a good motivator to help us when we're feeling the tug to go back to that unhealthy behavior. So we use this time in the preparation stage to develop those things so that when we move into the next stage, which is action, we're ready, we're prepared, we're motivated, and we have the tools below us to kind of lift us up and, and push us forward. 
So this is the point when we're moving into the action. This is when we're actively moving towards changing the behavior that we have seen as either an unhealthy behavior or it's just even just something we want to improve on. Like I said before, we want to have some strong motivators behind us. We want to have a strong why. So when the determination and the motivation levels drop, we have something that can bring us back up to a space where we feel we can keep continue progressing. We also want to make sure that we are recognizing that Things aren't going to work smoothly. We may need to dip back into that preparation stage to look for other techniques that can help us change the behaviour if, if the one we thought would work isn't working anymore or isn't strong enough. We may need to look for more techniques to help us in that, in that place and then move back into the action stage so that we can keep moving forward. This is the place where we start actively recognising how our triggers and warning signs can move us back into wanting to use those unhealthy behaviours. We've created that why so we can challenge those behaviours, we can challenge those experiences that may draw us back. And we start finding the supports and the people around us that we need to help celebrate and encourage us in this new behaviour. One thing that I've seen a lot of people try is owning the new behaviour. Use your language and expression to help you recognise that, heck, I'm actually, I'm actually doing this. I'm starting to change and I'm owning this. This is the stage where we want to really solidify the strategies that we're using so that they become more second nature than something we have to think really hard to do. And this helps lead us into the fifth stage, which is maintenance. We've gone from seeing the behaviour as something that is totally okay and doesn't need changing to starting to recognise that it's a bit of an unhealthy behaviour and we want to start moving it on, but we're not quite ready yet. Then we've moved into the preparation stage where we've gone, okay, yeah, I need to change this. And we've prepared ourselves and we've um, planned and created motivation so that when we've moved into the action stage, we're ready to go and we, we power through those challenges. And then we've gone to the maintenance stage, which is where we've, we've started to actually integrate this new positive behaviour into our day-to-day -day life. We've worked really hard in the action stage so that when we do move into the maintenance stage, we're coming to a place where we really understand our triggers and our warning signs and those things that set us back and we're able to catch them really early so that we can, we can flip them and then move on. This is also the stage where we want to make sure that we're checking our self-talk that we're being very compassionate towards ourselves. And just like in the action stage, we're really owning the change in behavior and we're, we're bringing it into the way we speak about ourselves. It's also important to recognize that this is a cycle. As I said, at any moment in the action and the maintenance, we do have a chance that we can slip into relapse and take us back to the pre-contemplation stage. But at least we can recognize now that there is a way to move back through those stages. And we're not gonna live forever in that pre-contemplation stage. We do, have the, we do have the potential to move ourselves through those stages. So they're the five stages of change. In the next video, we're gonna look through the different areas and facets of life so that we can see which areas of life we want to start applying these stages of change to. Again, thanks so much for watching. I'd love to hear from you down in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Like and subscribe.